place in St. Joseph, Missouri, Civic Arena, anticipating a high-scoring affair as a national championship is on the line today. The Drury Lady Panthers meet the California PA Vulcans for the Women's Division II basketball crown. Neither team has ever made it this far before, but both teams well-deserving of a spot of the 2004 title game. Cal PA beat the defending national champs, then knocked off Merrimack. Drury beat the number one overall seed in Seattle Pacific and wasn't really challenged in a win against Henderson State in the semifinals. The starting lineups, Cal PA with a couple of the seniors, a couple of the juniors and a sophomore. Drury with three sophomores, a junior and a senior. Our star watch today features a pair of outstanding sophomore point guards. Dave, these two point guards are outstanding. Neither one of them played point guard in high school, have made the adjustment very well. For Stork, only five foot four, 12 and 14 assists in the first and second round games. Rutledge has been on fire and eight steals in the quarterfinal game. A tremendous matchup. Darcy Vincent's done an excellent job, led California to the final four a year ago. They lost in the semis. Nyla Millison, who started this basketball program back in 2000, Heartland Conference Coach of the Year. Along with Brenda Van Lang and I'm Dave Pash, California's wearing the red and Drury in the white. And it's Cal PA that wins the toss. Megan Stork with the game's first shot. And a rebound for Allison Regeer. Well, this is going to be such a fun game. This place is packed. Both teams wearing red and black. Darcy Vincent, the head coach for Cal PA, talking about we want to imagine that these fans are all here for us, but there are a lot of jury fans here. Joe Curry gets the game's first basket. Two of the top three scoring teams in Division II women's college basketball. Both teams have scored 90 or more points since they came to the Elite Eight earlier this week. It's just been a lot of fun. They both get up and down the court. They may have some jitters here early, but knocking down those first couple of shots are going to be important for it to help them to settle down and get into the ball game. Aaron Dillon to the first basket for Cal PA. She had 18 points in the Elite Eight game against South Dakota State. Newton scores and she's fouled. The leading score for Drury, who's a Kodak All-American, gives Drury a two-point lead. And that's going to be a very important element for Drury, being able to establish the inside game. Nice job of bounce passing inside to Amanda Newton. And to get that first foul on Sarah McKinney, the Kodak All-American for Cal PA, very big. We'll have to watch how she continues to defend. If she's the one that gets matched up on the block, watch for Drury to continue to go inside. Sarah McKinney, leading scorer, number 42 in red, and she gets her first deuce, pulls Cal PA within one. She is a very smooth perimeter player, nice mid-range jumper, can also put the ball on the floor. McKinney, a two-time All-American and two-time Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Player of the Year. She's a junior from Duquesne, Pennsylvania. And McKinney was not recruited by anybody. No Division II schools even looked at her, or NAIA schools, but when Darcy Vincent sat down with her and looked in her eyes, Sarah said, give me a chance. And uh, she did, and McKinney has been brilliant this year, and really her entire career, getting Cal PA to their second straight Final Four and their first ever national championship game. It's gonna be very important to see how these two teams take care of the basketball this afternoon. McKinney off to a great start with four quick points. And the Vulcans have a one-point lead. Right now, she's matched up McKinney against Allison Regeer, the sophomore for Drury. Watch them to make an adjustment. Nyla Millison talked to me about the fact that Jill Curry, the 6'1 senior, may get matched up on McKinney. Nice ball movement. McKinney so good putting the ball on the floor, can stop on a dime, raises up over the defender. That's a tough match up there. Four points and one foul for McKinney. As Megan Stork slows it down. Dillon for three. Excellent three-point shooter at 43%. She has five points already. And what she does so well is shoot the three in transition. Darcy Vincent talked to her team about why did Dillon get 10 three-point attempts in the first round and only four in the second. We weren't pushing in transition and getting her the ball enough. We knew we'd have a high-scoring affair. 17 total points and just over two minutes scored. And both teams are shooting terrifically. California is at 80%. Drury has not missed three for three as McKinney goes to work again and draws the foul on Allison Regeer. 
That's the first foul on Drury. A jury plays man-to-man, -man, has all year long. You know that there are going to be some tough matchups against this Cal PA team. They're going to need to bring a little help as McKinney puts the ball on the floor. A little double team as she puts the ball on the court. That's the most difficult one-on-one -on -one matchup for this jury team. You can see the numbers that they put up. I mean, the field goal percentage, the way they've been able to be so effective with that 52% is because they can rebound the ball. They get on the offensive boards, and you see the numbers they can put on the scoreboard. And they've led the country two straight years now in rebound margin. And it's interesting because Drury, in its semifinal game, out-rebounded Henderson State by 17. So they're not a bad board team either. Stork pushing the pace. Simback missing. Rebounded by Newton, who averages over six points per contest. LPA by three. We're less than three minutes into the national title game, Division II women's basketball. And you're going to see Cal PA throw a couple of different defenses here. Drury has three turnovers early, needs to do a better job taking care of the basketball. But Cal PA is so disruptive with their defense. They're going to throw a little man, a little matchup zone, some trap. Already for the Lady Panthers, zero for the Balkans. Take that back, their first one of the day. California PAs won 10 straight games. Darcy Vincent's team, the number one seed in the East Regional. Drury has won 30 in a row, and they are the top seed in the South Central Regional. Well, both these teams had great wins over very tough opponents in the first round. Drury beat Seattle Pacific, who had been ranked number one for a long time this year, undefeated. And Cal PA in their first round beat the defending national champ, South Dakota State. A steal by Hope Hunt, and that's the second straight turnover and a kickball, second straight turnover by Cal PA. We set the shot clock to 30. Okay, we knew we'd have a high-scoring game, but before the first media timeout, we're already at 11 to 8. A lot of scoring going on. These teams push tempo, make good decisions in the offense. In the Elite Eight game, Cal scored 96 points. And in the Elite Eight game, Drury scored 94 against the number one overall seed in this tournament, Seattle Pacific. Newton driving, and she's fouled. That's the second team foul on Cal PA and the first on Becky Simba. We've talked about the fact that McKinney is a tough matchup, but I tell you what, Newton is a tough matchup, I think, for this Cal PA team. Take a look at the numbers that she has put up this season. She is so good at rebounding. And look at the offensive production, 56 and 55% for the two interior players for this Drury team. Their inside game does a great job of setting up their great three-point shooting. Newton with four points. She had a double-double in the semifinal, 17 points and 14 rebounds. She was the MVP of the South Central Region and a Kodak All-American. McKinney off the lob from Stork. Cal PA by four. Beautiful execution. Back screen to free up McKinney. Rutledge on the other end. The only thing that's slowing these teams down is Cal PA turns it over the nets the ball takes a little bit longer to get out of these nets but still 24 total points scored in just over four minutes sarah mckinney the story early for cal pa she's got eight points and the vulcans lead by two selling car in its class. You like me now, Pontiac that? 5. Official performance machine of the NCAA Women's Final Four. You've got to step up. Close out all of the pressure. Trust everything you've been taught. And just believe you can do it. You know, my first day on the job, Sure felt familiar. 
There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. It's the middle of the night. All is well because this child and her family are protected by Armstrong Guardian Protection Service. Yes, the same company you trust for cable television and high-speed internet service can also keep your family safe and secure. Call Armstrong Guardian at 1-888-GUARD-US. It will bring you peace of mind. Winter presents drivers with countless hazards. Ice, snow, and freezing rain, to name just three. So unless you're driving one of these, play it safe. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO for immediate coverage. With low monthly payments, you can make over the phone. Or by logging onto our website. Safe Auto can help provide you with something every driver wants. Smooth sailing. So call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO right now. Operators are standing by. Safe Auto. Play it safe. Safe Auto. Cal PA leading Drury by two in the Women's Division II National Basketball Championship. Dave Pash and Brenda Van Langen. And if you're a fan of run and gun basketball, this is your game. You're going to see it. We've seen a few turnovers here early, but these teams like to get up and down the court. But right now, the tough matchup for Drury is Sarah McKinney. She's done a great job so far offensively. And here she is. She's the ball. She's on the wing. They're going to get the ball. And then Stork goes and gets a hand to freeze it right there. We've got the back screen here and then a cut to the basket. They do a nice job but clearing out the backside, Stork is so good at passing the ball, and McKinney athletic enough to get the ball in the air and score. And that is a very tough matchup for Drury. Cal PA is doing a nice job of exploiting that so far. Shot from the corner won't go for Hunt. Rebound by the point guard, Rutledge, who actually had six boards in the semifinal game. Both teams shooting over 50%. We're tied as Newton gets points five and six. And Drury has had success every time they've gone into Newton. McKinney was guarding her early. Now Simback, and Simback already has one foul, so she's backing off a little bit. If I'm Drury, I'm continuing to take the ball inside to Newton. Shot clock at 15. Dylan, who hit a three earlier, break that one. No foul called. Last touch by Cal P.A. as Stork was trying to save it along the sideline. You can see how Cal P.A. is crashing the boards. It looked like Drury had nice position, but Samira Filia, the senior, number 23, was all over trying to just tip the ball and keep it alive. They're going to do everything they can to get on the offensive boards this Cal P.A. team. Both teams making their first appearance in the national title game, although California was in the Final Four a year ago. And Northern Kentucky must have done a terrific defensive job holding Cal P.A. to just 43 points in that game. They make it 43 with five minutes left in the first half in this game. And a travel against Stork. Well, this Cal P.A. team this year is a lot different than last year. They really only had three scores. McKinney had an injured ankle. Phil Yaw did not have as good a year last year. But Becky Simback inside, she was the player of the year in Division II, and she averaged 17 points a game. But they did not put as many points on the board last year. Now they have five players on the court who can score. And, you know, Drury is the same way. They've got each team has four teams or four players that score in double figures. You mentioned Simback, Division II National Player of the Year, for scoring down this year because they have more balance. And you look at Drury, and they really have the same story there, where Jill Curry was the heart Conference Player of the Year for Nyla Millicent a year ago, but her scoring numbers down because better balance. Yeah, these teams are just a mirror image of one another in so many different ways, from the point guards to the fast tempo to seniors really giving up points to make the team better. It's just a great story between these two teams. Megan Stork finds McKinney. Good pass inside, and Phil Yaw converts. That's a beautiful job by McKinney. She had Newton running out of her, the taller post player, to defend, and McKinney did a nice job of passing inside to Phil Yaw. First points for Samira Phil Yaw, who averages 16 points per game and shoots 65% from the floor. Good for third best in the country. Ten to shoot. Rutledge with Sim back on her. This may be the only time in the game where the shot clock comes into play. 
Last touch by Drury. We talked about the fact that McKinney is so good off the dribble with scoring, but watch Newton here comes over, gets her hands up, and you just have to get the ball up in the air for Samara Filia. She's so good at going up and getting the basketball, and you talked about what a great shooting percentage she has. Watch for more of that from Cal PA to try to get some passing and get the ball in the paint. A repeat performance in the opening six minutes in terms of shooting for Cal PA from its semifinal win against Merrimack. Another basket inside for McKinney. She's got 10 points. And we were told by Nyla Millison last night, Brenda, that she was really concerned about stopping 42 in red, Sarah McKinney. Newton scores and she's fouled. Newton having a great game so far with eight points. Well, this is just fun to watch how both teams are using their top players. Excellent pass by Rutledge to get the ball to Newton. Newton is the tough matchup right now for Cal PA. Her strength, her ability to go up inside. We have not seen a match so far by Cal PA. And Drury's doing a nice job of recognizing and getting her the basketball. Dillon commits the foul her first. Third against Cal PA. Drury within one with seven minutes played in the national championship game in Division II. Go to McKinney again. A lot of the foul won't get the call. And it goes to Drury. Well, the last few possessions, Sarah Stratton has come off the bench. The senior brings a real sense of calm to this team, but only five foot six, and she's having to defend McKinney, who is five foot ten, and that's a matchup that Cal PA is trying to take advantage of right now. Newton double team travel. Excellent double team, and that's what Cal PA likes to do. They'll trap on the wing, they'll trap the ball handler at the point, and they will bring the trap on the post. They did that against in their semifinal game the other night very effectively. Stork trying to get it to McKinney. Pass broken up. 18 seconds on the shot clock as Cal PA retains possession. You see Megan Stork, 20 in red, three straight double doubles, set a Cal C single season record for assists and steals. Philia, too strong with that shot, rebound by Curry. Seem like the pace has slowed it all to you. But both teams getting it up and down the court. Drury's been a little more patient in their half court offense the last few times. Cal PA doing a good job of getting back in transition to stop the Drury fast break. Brunson with six on the timer. Stratton. Rebound by McKinney. You know, keep in mind that this Drury program has only been in existence for four years. Nyla Millicent was hired five years ago to start it. And Sarah Stratton, who took that last three-point attempt, actually made the first basket ever for the Drury program. You know, it's really amazing when you think about what Millicent's done. In pro sports, you usually get a year to get your players, but you also have all that money to go out and get free agents. You don't have that, obviously, in college hoops. So I think it just emphasizes the point even more of what an amazing job Nyla Millicent has done with Drury. Well, I'll tell you what, Drury's done a great job, too, of giving her the budget and the resources. They have the exact same budget at Drury in the women's program that they do in the men's program. And I think that's a lot of why they've been so successful. They've been able to treat this as a first class, pre first class program from the beginning. McKinney Strip brought the out of there with it, and Drury can take the lead. Jill Curry got doubled, and she dumped it off to Newton, so a nice adjustment to get it to the open player. Curry missing inside. And on the floor to get it is Phil Young. Stork out of there with it. So far, the leading scorers for both teams, the leading scorers during the season. McKinney with 10 for Cal PA. Newton with 11 for Curry. Rebound by Curry. As soon as the point guards get the ball, they are pushing ahead. Rutledge always looking ahead. Newt trying to muscle her way in, and that one in and out. Now Cal PA going to slow it up. You know, and Aaron Dillon, who's defending Newton right now, is the player that's, that is on as a guard. At six foot two, she's a guard on offense, but she's playing post defense. This is the first year she's played guard in her career. 
Jim Stork, near 40% three-point shooter. And it's a four-point edge for Cal PA. Nice kick out of the double. The ball moving all the way around by Drury in this game. Curry with the left hand, and McKinney clears. Fifth rebound to go along with 10 points for McKinney, and an excellent pass ahead to Phil Yaw. Couldn't convert on the fast break. And the 5'6 senior gets down there and blocks the shot. What great hustle by Sarah Stratton. Approaching nine minutes to play in the Division II national title. First half action from St. Joseph, Missouri. The Civic Arena, Dave Patch with Brenda Van Langen. We've got an excellent high-paced game between two of the top scoring teams in Division II women's college basketball. Two excellent shooting teams. Both teams right around 50% in this game. As Stork gets inside but can't hit it. Got a tie-up, and it will stay Drury basketball. Cal Pennsylvania leads by four. Back to St. Joe's, Missouri after this. Put that fork down and step away from the salad. Salads aren't supposed to be brown. Go to Wendy's. Oh, no, not again. Wouldn't a spinach chicken salad be good? Romaine, chopped egg, and bacon? Wendy's has that? Honey, what are you doing? Just a second, honey. And, and, and a sweet and sour bacon dressing with, with just two and a half grams of fat. You with Wendy's? Well, unofficially. <sighs> Wendy's new spinach chicken salad. It's better here. I'm so sorry. This will never happen again. Thank you. It's not the Gilmore that excites me, that thrills and delights me. Oh, no. It's just the nearness of you when you're in my arms and I feel so With over 500 hotels nationwide, we're never far away. Unless, of course, you'd like us to be. Courtyard. Our rooms were made for you. I pull for the underdog. Come on! I pray, curse, cry. I will drop down on my knees and beg for a three-pointer from half court. Play your way to the NCAA Final Four with Singular. You can be entered weekly for a trip for two every time you send and receive a text, instant, or a multimedia message. And every time you download games and ringtones. The more you do, the better your chances. I call it the... Yeah, baby! Plan. Play your way to the NCAA Final Four. Another way Singular fits you best. Will my car be ready this afternoon like you promised? Yes. Will you use a bunch of lingo I won't understand? No. Will you try to sell me something I really don't need? No. Do you like Broadway show tunes? No. Visit your neighborhood Midas mechanic now for lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes. Just $89.95, including installation. Guaranteed for as long as you own your car. For mechanics known for their work and their word. Trust the Midas touch. Cal PA leads Drury in the Women's Division II national title game by four in the first half. Tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues. West Regional semifinal games at 9 Eastern. LSU taking on Texas for the second straight year. Texas beat them in the Elite Eight last year. And 11 Eastern on ESPN2, Georgia meets Purdue. Jody Conrad in that game tonight against LSU. That is going to be a tremendous matchup. Seeing Summit later down the line, of course, those two with their numbers. But Sue Gunter, the next coach right behind them, not coaching on the sidelines for LSU. But that guard matchup, it's so good. Heard earlier today on ESPN that Jamie Carey for Texas is okay after that tough blow she took. This could be a great guard matchup. But we have a good matchup here between the inside play of Newton and the perimeter play of McKinney. Both players finding a way to score, doing an excellent job so far early in this game. Timeout called as Cal PA couldn't get it in, so a 30-second timeout called by Darcy Vincent. Head coach Darcy Vincent, the head coach for Cal, loves what Sarah McKinney has brought to this program. She's going to be a huge role for us because I think that's our matchup problem. Uh, it could be a matchup problem for juries. They, they've got to 
take Sarah out of the ball game. Um, whereas on the other side of that, we got to say, Sarah, you, you are that, you know, you're something different. You're, you're something they've got to um, bring and have, but we don't have to defend a player like you. Now we obviously have to go out and defend ball handlers, penetrators, you know, shooters. But as far as that athletic ability and that ability to, you know, get up over top of somebody, you know, in that guard position and those type of moves, you know, we have that one player. So it's going to be very important in tomorrow night's success. Um, of what that was Vincent yesterday talking about McKinney, and as she's talking about her, McKinney's ears burning, perhaps. 12 points now for McKinney. She's 5 out of 8 from the floor. She also has 5 rebounds. And Drury hasn't found the matchup. That time they come out with Amy Ballou, a 6-foot sophomore, to try to defend McKinney, and she gets it on the inbound play. Shot clock at 8. McKinney with good defense on Hunt forces a turnover. She's doing it on both ends of the floor for California, Pennsylvania. Hope Hunt trying to create, make something happen. Hunt, the Heartland Conference Player of the Year this year, had the most consistent play during conference play, but hasn't really put up the numbers here at the Elite Eight yet. McKinney's pass through the arms of Mills. She tracks it down now. Mills had a terrific game in the semifinals. Averages right around two points per game. It had 10 points in the win over Merrimack. And here she's fouled and will go to the line for a pair. That's going to be the second foul on Regeer. And only two fouls on Drury so far in this game the as a team. Foul is on Brunson, number one. Megan Stork just did an awesome job. She had a ball screen set for her. And as the defender jumped out, she just split the defenders, got into the paint, and delivered the ball to Mills. Excellent job by Stork. Kind of a high-risk, high-reward kind of player is Megan Stork at that point guard position. We talked about the fact that she had 12 and 14 assists in the first two round games, but she also had eight and nine turnovers in those games. So a little high-risk, high-reward for Megan Stork at the point guard position. Mills hits them both. Normally just a 59% free throw shooter, but she gives Cal PA its largest lead of the day. Eight points over Nyla Millison and Drury. Uh, yes, I'd like to order a pizza with lots of... Sausage! Oh, Kermit! Pepperoni! Extra cheese! It's the pizza fight forever with the amazing new four-for-all pizza from Pizza Hut. Four different pizzas topped just the way you like them. Just eleven ninety nine. You gotta have the good stuff! We are low-budget films from New Jersey. We're on the Winter Fresh Network. Winter Fresh Network, where icy cool breath is always on. Last week on Dream Job, Kelly and Casey were cut. This week, four remain, but only one will win the desk job of a lifetime. This is the creme, baby. Dream Job, the two-hour season finale, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. West Regional Semifinals continue tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN. There's never been a better time to buy a Mitsubishi than right now at Sendo Mitsubishi of Greenspark. Justin, check out the all-new Endeavor, the newly designed Lancer and Galant, and the more powerful Mitsubishi Outlander. At Sendo Mitsubishi, you'll always get the best price with no hassle or high pressure. So if you're looking for a new or pre-owned Mitsubishi, visit Sendo Mitsubishi of Greenspark. Because if you buy a Mitsubishi someplace else, you'll pay more money Welcome to Tokyo. Bob is lost. Do you know that back? A ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Bob doesn't speak the language. Lip them. What? Hey, lip my stocking. Lip them? What? <laughs> Lucky for Bob. Did you buy a Porsche? I was thinking about buying a Porsche. Friendship needs no translation. <laughs> Order the best Bill Murray movie, period. Lost in translation on in-demand pay-per-view. Get the comedies you want delivered home on digital cable. Not a bad dream to be either on Sports Center or to have your team win a national title. Drury, though, down by eight to Cal PA with just under eight to play in the first half of the Division II national title game from St. Joseph, Missouri. 
And Sarah McKinney, 42 in red. The story so far, 12 points, five rebounds for Cal PA. And what a great story. She was a player in high school that really wasn't even recruited. A lot of people thought she had an attitude problem, but Darcy Vincent really thought that she was the kind of player she could make be a big part of this program. Dave Pash and Brenda Van Langen in the Division II Women's Championship game. Cal in the red, Drury in the white. So far, Cal making the most of Drury turnovers, and the reason why they lead by eight is McKinney pulls down another rebound, and Stork looks to run for Cal PA. She's fouled. They'll go to the line for a pair. Third team foul on Drury. A Drury foul is on Ballou. They get Ballou one, for the personal three. foul. That's her first. It's Megan Stork. And to finish up that story about Sarah McKinney and that recruiting with Darcy Vincent, Darcy went to McKinney and talked to her and looked her in the eye and Sarah McKinney just said give me a chance coach and Darcy Vincent just felt like she was the kind of kid that she could bring in and make to be an important part of her program and uh, there's no doubt Sarah McKinney comes in as a Kodak All-American her freshman year she has an injury she dealt with all year last year but again Kodak All-American this year her junior year and has just been a very integral part of this Cal PA program. Stork goes one out of two at the line. McKinney has actually lost 30 pounds since high school. And you look at her frame and you just don't see where that 30 pounds could have been. It's amazing, but uh, you know, just the dedication she showed and the commitment to this program has made a huge difference. Brown having some trouble in the corner. There's McKinney again on defense. And on offense as well. 14 points now for Sarah McKinney. And it's an 11-point lead for Cal PA and a timeout by Nyla Millicent and Drury. McKinney feeling it right now. Great job defensively stepping in. It was a bad pass inside, but McKinney takes advantage and pulls up here. She's got offensive rebounders crashing the board. Cal PA was all in position. She could pull up and take that shot. She shot it with confidence, but also knew that her teammates were there for the offensive rebound. Coming up tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2, NCAA Women's Championship Basketball continues with the Mideast Regional Semifinal Games. La Tech and Duke at noon, and then on ESPN2, Boston College, the Big East Tournament Champs take on Minnesota. ESPN, your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Championship. For more, go to ESPN.com. I know Nyla Millicent right now has to be concerned about this matchup with McKinney, but more importantly, not turning the basketball over. Drury has eight turnovers right now, and they have just not been able to get into an offensive flow. Credit the Cal PA defense. Drury also has just one three-pointer, one out of four from three. Curry gets three and ends a 7-0 Cal PA run. First team all Heartland Conference all four years, and she did a nice job setting up that move. fans from Springfield, Missouri, where Drury is located and made the drive here to St. Joseph. Stork going one-on-one -on -one and banking it in over Rutledge. That is not an easy shot for Stork. She gives up five inches there and then comes back on the defensive end and tries to make the pitch, but that is a nice job by Stork of creating some space so she can go up over Rutledge. Newton misses on the inside. And rebound to Mills. Here goes Cal PA pushing ahead. Stork looking to create. Out of there with it is Hunt. 11 point lead for California, Pennsylvania, the number one seed from the East Regional. No team from the East Region has ever won a D2 national title. Curry trying to take things into her own hands with her second straight basket. Same move twice in a row. She does a nice job setting up her move one way. a little closer and hits again. Boy, Cal PA is just playing with so much confidence here in the early going. Shoot 54% are the Balkans so far in the first half, and they lead by 11 with five to play. Hunt can't answer with a three. 
And a foul called on Newton. She was over the back of McKinney. It's a little frustrating right now offensively for Drury because Cal PA has shown some man, they've showed some trapping, and there they were in a matchup zone. But they do a nice job of blocking out here, even in the zone. Look at the blockout position there inside. Keeps Newton on her back, does McKinney, and draws the foul. First foul on Newton in the fourth on Drury. McKinney getting it done with 16 points on 7 of 10 shooting. This Cal PA team got so much motivation from making, advancing to the final four last year and losing by two points, and they were ready for this national championship game back in September. Curry misses. Newton has it stripped, but a foul called, and that's two on McKinney. Keep an eye on that. Her second foul, and the 14th foul on California. Look at that comparison. McKinney has really been all it. She has created so much, but the rest of the team has picked it up in transition. Stork creating, setting up Dylan for the three-pointers. There's been nice effort by the rest of the team, but McKinney really has been the player that's been so tough to stop. But let's keep an eye out. Is she able to play defense with her two fouls? She's staying in the game. Newton hits both foul shots. She has 13 points. She averages 14 points per game. Kodak All-American at 23 in the Elite Eight. McKinney again. 18 now for McKinney. Well, that's why McKinney's staying on the court. But let's watch where she is in this defense now as Drury comes down the court. That's a little matchup zone. And see, that's McKinney right there. She jumped up into the passing lane and forced the turnover and told us that uh, their biggest concern was stopping 42 in red and what McKinney could do on offense, but McKinney doing a lot on defense in this game too, Brenda. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. She has shown that she is a tremendous player, both on the offensive and defensive end. Here's that back pick again. Drury snuffed it out, though. A little zone defense by Drury. McKinney loses it, and it'll be Drury ball. Trailing Sarah McKinney and California, Pennsylvania by 13 points late in the first half. It's like to have the hot hand in the hottest selling car in its class. Now you like me now, Pontiac Vibe. Official performance machine of the NCAA Women's Final Four. Campbell's Chunky Soup in microwavable bowls with big chunks of meat and veggies to fill you up right. Wherever, whenever, make it Campbell's instead. Casual male, big and tall, presents me, George Foreman, with my new comfort zone collection. Collar stretch, waist adjust, shoulders expand, expand on just a incredible. Get into my comfort zone only at Casual Mail, big and tall. We are dreaming now, yeah, we are dreaming now. We gonna make it real, yeah, we gonna make it real. Wherever you go, whatever you do, Honda Portable Generators make the great outdoors, well, great. We're gonna do a little skate. You wanna dream, it's all it takes, yeah! Hey, it's your life. Turn it on. Turn it on, baby. I like a big number. But I love a big sale. Get ready, get on track. For the big, big sale at Radio Shack. Savings galore now in store. Incredible deals too big to ignore. Now at Radio Shack, get free phones for the entire family. Get this Motorola C343 phone for free. And up to four more free phones with two-year agreement per phone. Plus, free in-network calling to any Verizon Wireless customer from the national in-network coverage area. Radio Shack. Reese Davis, Nell Fortner, Stacey Dale Schumann coming up on the singular halftime report. We'll look back at a couple of terrific games in Division I in the East region. Well, I tell you what, Penn State, very balanced scoring. They are just being able to distribute the, distribute the ball, and everybody's helping out. Connecticut defensively, wow. Connecticut advances to the Elite say. Eight, and we'll also look ahead to tonight when we move our attention into the West region. That's all coming up on the singular halftime report. As soon as you guys finish up the first half, Dave.
All right, Reese, and I'm surprised that you can be in two places at once, in the studio and here in costume, as uh, whatever this thing is, the mascot for Cal PA, half Sasquatch, half man. That is what we're told is a Vulcan. Reese looks pretty good, though, with that beard. <laughs> That's cold. That's cold. Look at McKinney, 18 points so far. She's shooting 61% in the last three games from the field. A lot of ball pressure, making it very difficult. Drury has to find a way to go against these changing defenses of Cal PA. Creed had trouble with that shot, but cleaning up the messes were here. And on her 20th birthday, she gets her first points of the game. Good second effort, good hustle by Regeer, getting under the basket and getting that opportunity. Shot clock down to 10. Dylan gets a little bit closer and connects. Dylan. I talked earlier about the fact that Erin Dillon, this is the first year that she has played that guard position, and Darcy Vincent talked about that she just needs to find a shot. She doesn't have really developed that shooter's mentality yet, but tonight she's really been looking for her shots in the offense as Dillon. Alan Millison wanted a foul on the other end as Curry looked like she got bumped with no call. LPA trying to stretch the lead to 15 or perhaps 16. Drury has played man-to-man -man defense all year, but they're dusting off the zone right now, trying to keep Cal PA out of the paint. That looks able to find Curry to avoid the five-second call. Now we've got a foul going to be called on Phil Yaw. She knocked Newton to the floor. the first on Phil Yaw and the 15th foul for Darcy Vincent's Cal PA team. And Hope Hunt comes back in the game for Drury, replacing Creed. This Drury team looks a little stunned right now. They have not found the way to really attack and move against this Cal PA defense. They need to get a few shots knocked down, get some confidence here. Rutledge, the point guard with the ball in her hands, need to start creating, making something happen for her team. Hunt from deep. Rutledge keeps it alive, and Newton trying to follow. Jump ball, and it will stay Drury basketball. Remember, McKinney's on the bench right now with two fouls. And uh, Hunt hurt herself. We have seen some blood so far in this Elite Eight. Hunt getting hurt in this game. And uh, Amy Ballou took a 15 uh, stitches to clean up a wound when she took an elbow to the head in a game earlier. Oh, just a little elbow right to the face. Good hustle, you know, by Hunt to get in there. But uh, Becky Simbeck did a nice job of protecting the basketball. Coming up on the singular halftime report with Reese Davis, Notre Dame, Penn State in a good one. Huskies had a nice game against uh, Cal Santa Barbara, pulling out that win. And news on LSU, Texas. Terrific games in women's college basketball, Division One and Two today and tonight. And LSU with a big one tonight against Texas. Most tournament wins without reaching the Final Four. And you saw Louisiana State University last weekend. Uh, what'd you think? Well, they have some great guard plays. Simone Augustus, one of the best players in the country. And, you know, Texas was the team that knocked them out last year. They, LSU was the number one seed and Texas beat them to advance to the women's final four. So an opportunity for LSU to try to get a little revenge this afternoon. But they have a tough matchup, does Texas, with uh, scores from five positions. Heather Schreiber, Jamie Carey coming out of their slumps, doing a nice job on the perimeter to match up with that LSU game. You saw the numbers on Hunt, 0 for 4 from the floor, 0 for 3 from three-point land, and she was the conference player of the year. And Nyla Millicent's team, they need her offense, but right now on the bench with a bloody lip. And back into the game, Sarah McKinney with two fouls, but more importantly, 18 points, which has given Cal PA this 15-point lead. The jury in this possession has gotten two offensive rebounds. They need to take advantage and find a way to score here. They've got to find a way to get the ball in bounds. McKinney making another play on defense. 
you know, last time, Drury had a little nice inside-outside to set up the three-point shot. Drury is a great three-point shooting team. They need to do a little bit more of that. They just you don't feel like they have a lot of confidence right now. Bilga just taking it out of the arms of Curry. Neither team has ever been to the national title game. Last year, Cal made it to the Final Four, Jury to the Sweet 16. Jury's program has only been around for four years. Back clock at eight. Stork falling away again. This time can't get it to fall. And Curry hammered as she pulls down the rebound. I'll tell you what, this Jury team does a nice job of blocking out, but Cal PA is just relentless attacking the offensive boards, trying to make something happen. They get the foul there, but you have to block them out every time because they just have that mentality of getting on the offensive boards. Curry up, rebounding the nation's leader by three so far. Ball was on Gattuso, her first and the sixth on California PA. The three rolls home for Regeer, and that's a big one. That's that inside outside I'm talking about, Dave. They need to get the ball inside, get the defense to collapse around, and kick it out and look for a few of those three pointers that this Drury team is so good at. Billya fouled on her way to the basket. Fifth team foul against Drury, and the foul goes to Brunson, 32 in white. That's her first. Darcy Vincent, 111 and 19. And 10 of those 19 losses came in her first year. As Phil Yaw gets another two inside the stretch, the lead at 12 again. And Darcy Vincent was a point guard for Duquesne in her playing days. And she's already had great success in her young career at Slippery Rock, taking them to the Elite Eight, and now taking this team to two Elite Eights and being in the national title game. 15 points for Newton. Rutledge steals and scores to cut the lead to eight. Looks like a play Kelly Mazanti had for Penn State earlier today. McKinney can't answer. Offensive board for Simbach. Simbach has four offensive rebounds in each of the two games previous to this game. Travel on Phil Yaw. Cal PA had a couple of chances, and Drury loving it with a chance perhaps to cut it to five with a three, and they can hold for one shot. Well, this crowd, only a three and a half, four hour drive from Springfield, Missouri, packing the stands. This crowd wants to try to help this Drury team get some momentum going into the halftime locker room. Newton's out of the game, so what do you look for here on offense for Drury with his final position? Well, again, they can still go inside the Curry and use her to set up a little inside outside. Clock at five. Brunson lost it, but on the backside is Curry, but she can't make it as the buzzer sounds. Still, Drury able to cut the lead to eight, but Sarah McKinney terrific in the first half. 18 points, and California PA leads by eight. <laughs> Good to hear, Reese, and here California PA and Drury in a great game in the first half. We saw one team shoot 50%. That was Cal. Drury had a stretch of about four and a half minutes where it didn't score, and that's really Brenda Van Langen when Cal took over in that first half, and McKinney started to go off. I think that's been the real key to the game, the fact that Cal PA has done so well offensively, but their defense probably doesn't get enough credit. They did a great job defensively. And the story of the game was Sarah McKinney. She was so tough for Drury to guard. She got the pass on the screen. She created with the dribble, but Amanda Newton for Drury inside. The inside player was able to, they were able to pound inside. She was able to take advantage of her size and quickness. The one thing that we want to see more of in the second half, here's Amanda Newton. I think Drury needs to get the ball into her and then use that. Stop right there. Look at all the eyes looking at her. Use that inside to set up the outside. They did that coming down the stretch in the first half and Amanda Newton can go one on one herself, but they need to look to create more with the inside outside. That's a Home Depot coach adjustment part of the second half in the division two women's basketball championship neither team has made it this far before Cal was in the final four a year ago jury's program is only four years old and here it is in the national title game trailing by eight to start the second stanza 
Dillon with a three early in the first half. Starting the second off on a positive with a three for Cal PA. Well, and Drury ended the first half going to a zone. They came out of the locker room in a zone. Cal PA did a nice job passing the ball around the perimeter and finding Dillon. Punt answers for Drury. She struggled in the first half. Didn't score. That's her first basket of the day. Well, Drury had 10 three-pointers in their semifinal win. Only one in the quarterfinal, and that was so unusual for them. They are an excellent three-point shooting team, shooting 37% on the year. Jump ball, and we'll go to Drury. Well, Hunt averages 14 points per game, only 11 points in the semis, and again, just three so far in this game. But if she gets going, and that certainly will bode well for Drury here in the second half. Drury needs to make a run here. The first five minutes of the second half, so important. Cal PA played with such intensity in the first half, and Drury needs more of that. That's an excellent pass inside by the senior, Jill Curry. Amanda Newton with 17 points now. She's the leading scorer for Drury, which is within six. Count the basket by McKinney, and a foul. Well, we've seen both teams pounding it in the paint start the half. Curry does a nice job finding Newton cutting under the basket for a nice high-low look, but then McKinney takes it in. Pretty good defensive position there by Newton, but maybe a little too far under the basket, and McKinney just so strong and so good at going up over the defender. 20 points now for the two-time All-American and two-time Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Player of the Year. Lead is back to nine for Cal Pennsylvania. California is uh, about 90 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Three won't go for Rutledge, but a rebound by Hunt. And Springfield, Missouri is where Drury is located. It's not that far of a drive from here. We're in St. Joseph, Missouri at the Civic Arena. And blocked by McKinney. But McKinney was running the other way, and Newton was there. Great save by McKinney. Inside of Curry is fouled by Sinbad. I tell you what, I love the way Amanda Newton plays for this team. Only a sophomore. And so and three sophomore starters on the court right now, but Newton just got after the offensive board, not afraid to sacrifice her body. Newton goes in, gets that strip, and even after she misses that shot, she goes and gets on the floor and keeps the ball alive for her team. I think what's also amazing is, for really both teams, the uh, academic excellence. You talked about Newton on the floor. She is a 3-9 GPA. Kara Rutledge, a 3-9 GPA. Last semester, Drury as a team had a 3.7 grade point average. Cal PA, not a bad academic institution either. Last year, their GPA as a team was 3.56, which was good for sixth best in Division II. I tell you what, it, it really speaks to why these two teams are here. You've got some very talented and skilled basketball players, but you have some very smart young women on both teams. Great representation of the student athlete moniker. And rebound for Cal PA as Dylan's out of there with it. It would have been a big shot for Drury to go down. Stork all the way, count it, and she'll go to the line. Where we talked about the sophomores for Drury and Megan Stork, only a sophomore as well, just pushes the tempo, pushes and pushes and makes things happen. She sees that nobody is picking her up. Revere gets caught up in the screen and Stork just attacks the rim to make something happen. Second foul on Regeer, second on Drury. A timeout called by California head coach Darcy Vincent. Ten-point lead for Cal PA, two and a half minutes into the second half in the Division II national title game from St. Joseph, Missouri. ESPN, the magazine, on newsstands now. This is Wendy's headquarters, and they sent me a letter. Dear Mr. Wendy, that's me. Thanks for your kind words. Yes, Wendy's hamburgers are delicious because we make them fresh when you order them. And you're right, our classic double with cheese does rock, especially the combo. But to your self-appointed title of Mr. Wendy, unofficial spokesman, our lawyers insist that you cease and desist from representing us. That's him. Let's uh, carpet speak for her. Keep up the good work. Hey, you! Wendy's classic hamburgers. It's better here. Hey!
getting hit anything. They pitch it for you, pound it. MVP Baseball 2004. Ready to be for everyone. Crush it online only with PlayStation 2. EA Sports. It's in the game. Is it true that you guys do more break jobs than anyone else? Yes. And are my pads and shoes really guaranteed for as long as I own my car? Yes. Even if it's 20 more years? Absolutely. Do you ever cry at weddings? No. Visit your neighborhood Midas mechanic now for lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes. Just $89.95, including installation. Guaranteed for as long as you own your car. For mechanics known for their work and their word, trust the Midas touch. Welcome to the wireless age. Got your HP Pavilion ZT3020 notebook PC featuring Intel Centrino mobile technology. Your HP camera and wireless printer. Setting it up was easy, right, techno boy? Because you went to CompUSA for that state-of-the-art HP engineering. Then CompUSA came over, set it up, and trained you for free. Who else gives you so much attention? <laughs> CompUSA unmatched. California, Pennsylvania leads Drury by 10 early in the second half. Tomorrow, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues with two Midwest regional semifinal games. Stanford and Vanderbilt at 7 Eastern, then at 9 Eastern, it's Baylor and the number one seed, Tennessee, on ESPN2. And for more info, go to ESPN.com. So, so far in this game, Curry and Hunt being held below their average. Hunt only shooting one of six right now for Drury. Curry has eight. She also has four assists. She's been making some things happen when she touches the ball. But Hunt needs to find a rhythm. She's had some pretty good looks, but she's a shooter. She needs to keep shooting the basketball. Newton with a great pass, and Curry finishes, and the lead is back to eight for Cal. Excellent ball movement there by Drury. Good unselfish play, moving the ball around to the open player. Newton has three assists to go along with those 17 points and seven rebounds for Drury. Simbach has been quiet. No points for her. She was the Division II National Player of the Year a year ago. Averages 15 points per game this season. Stork can't get the roll. Simbach with the offensive rebound. And Curry finally clears for Drury. Lady Panthers, who have won 30 straight games, the number one seed out of the South Region, South Central Regional, trying to cut this lead to six. But they turn it over. Danny Mills ahead to McKinney. She was able to call timeout. They say that she called time before she stepped on the baseline. A little scramble defense earlier. Let's go ahead and, and roll it. Look here. Watch Curry as she slides into the lane. And Newton has two players coming at her. Curry doing a nice job moving without the basketball. Cal PA was running a little scramble defense and lost sight of Curry in the lane. Well, Nyla Millison, uh, we talked earlier about how this team has such great balance. Here's Millison talking about Jill Curry. You have to give a lot of credit to that kid. Uh, she was an All-American honorable mention uh, selection last year. And the humbleness that she has gone into this season with, uh, not being our leading scorer, uh, but just continue to play. She just wants team success. And uh, she's done, stepped on the floor and done everything possible with her work ethic, uh, with her leadership, with her quiet, silly little way that she goes about things uh, to make sure that uh, our team has been successful. And Jill Curry, one of those seniors. There are four seniors plus Hope Hunt that were the very first players recruited into this brand new Drury women's basketball program. And Jill Curry was one of those. So, it, you know, it, it's pretty amazing, Nyla Millis and the program that she's put together, the fact that, that she brought in that good group to start it. Gets 20 wins the first year this team ever is in existence. And they're in the national championship game four years later. 
foul was on Newton. That's her third personal. And the third team foul. So Newton has to sit down and Ballou comes in. What does this mean perhaps for Drury? Uh, it's tough for Drury because Newton has been so good inside making things happen. She's been passing well. She's been shooting well. So they need to go inside to Jill Curry, the senior we were just talking about. Rutledge with the ball in her hands needs to get her team into executing their offense. That's what they do so well. And just handle the different defenses that Cal PA is throwing at them. Now we get a foul on California. That's on Stork. That's her first, second team foul on Cal PA in the second half. We're still early in the second stanza. And Cal PA leading by 10. Friends, will you take to this year's NCAA Men's Final Four? Look for specially marked packages of Planters. You can win four tickets to Mr. Peanut's luxury suite. Planters, put out the good stuff. My job keeps me hopping and on the road all the time, so I know hotels. And that's why I stay at Extended Stay America. I'm not cramped, it's value. I get a full kitchen so I can cook my own meals. There's a place where I can do a little work, even a recliner where I can just relax and check out the price. Everything I need, great price. That's real value. And I get it at Extended Stay America. Why would I stay anywhere else? How sweet it is to be loved. Understand my ups and downs. There you were. You were better to me than I was to myself. For me, there's you, and there ain't nobody else. Stay close to the ones you love. The neighborhood. Built by MCI, where you can make unlimited calls across the street and across the country for one low monthly price. How sweet it is to be loved by show people how much you care all the time and never worry about the cost. Call 1-800-JOIN-MCI and stay connected. California leads Drury by 10, and there is uh, the president of California, Pennsylvania, Angelo Armenti, Jr., who may be without that uh, shiny gray hair after today's game. He told his team that if they win the national championship, that it's coming off, he'll shave it. And uh, maybe he'll let uh, you do it, Brenda. <laughs> I'm pretty good with the razor, but you know, the reason he had that idea is because of Darcy. She had locks of love. She was growing her hair out for a year and a half, and her teammate or her players were telling her her hair was looking ratty, and so they were encouraging her to cut her hair, and she said she didn't want to break a 22-game winning streak. She made a deal with them. If you win by over 25 points against our rival, then we'll cut it. Well, they won that game by over 50 and brought out the scissors on the court right after the game and cut off enough hair for two wigs for 11-inch ponytails. Cutting the lead to eight is Hunt. Well, that's a great charity. Lost for love. Goes to make wigs for uh, leukemia patients. Well, that's a big score there by Hunt coming out. The big answer by Cal PA. Simbach has been very quiet so far. She's been getting offensive rebounds and playing good defense. We just haven't heard from her offensively. That's her first basket of the day. Curry. Can't get it to fall. And Stork, no foul call, and she will slow it down. And Stork there, only five foot four, gets down low and keeps the ball away because Curry was trying to get the basketball, and Megan Stork did a nice job of protecting the ball. Cal PA led by eight at halftime, right now a 10 point edge. Cal Pennsylvania has been blowing everybody out of this tournament. They won their semifinal game by 24 points. And their Elite Eight game by 17. Three won't go for Regeer. Last touch by California. 
jury has been holding their own. Nyla Millicent saying that rebounding would be such a key because Cal PA is so good out rebounding their opponents by 12 per game. But Drury has done a good job getting on the boards tonight. Perry just four for 11 from the field in this game. Regeer off the bounce. Rebound by Hunt. Another offensive rebound, another opportunity. California, which leads the country in rebounding margin, being out rebounded by four. Hunt misses that three. Mills cleans it up. Well, look at the look at the block out that time by Cal PA, going to make sure the jury did not get another shot at it. Hunt is an excellent three-point shooter, shooting 42.8 percent on the year, but she has just not been able to find her range in this afternoon's game. Mills can't get the roll. And bodies collide, and a foul's going to be called on Curry. That's her first foul. Watch the blockouts as the, as the ball goes up. Just watch each of the players here. You're going to see blockouts all over the place by Cal PA getting a body and not allowing Jury to get to the basketball. Dylan in and out with a three. Another play by Mills. She came up big in the semifinals. Has a couple of uh, rebounds so far in this game. McKinney, a rare miss. Now we've got to travel. It'll go to Drury as Mills couldn't come up with that play. Well, the zone defense for Drury has slowed down the Cal PA offense, but they haven't been able to really ignite and get into their offensive flow. We thought this game would be more up and down think the two defenses have really done an excellent job of containing, slowing the tempo of the game here, and forcing both teams to play within the half-court offense. Foul on Dillon. That's her second personal foul. Three fouls now on California's team, and a timeout by Drury. Tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues with West Regional Semifinal Games at 9 Eastern as LSU takes on number one seed Texas on ESPN. And at 11 Eastern, Georgia meets Purdue on ESPN2. ESPN's your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Championship. Purdue and it's a win against Villanova in the second round, shot only 81% for the floor. Just incredible. And Purdue winning that. Big Ten tournament and uh, their partners, Penn State, getting all they can handle from Notre Dame this afternoon. Penn State winning that game. And uh, there have just been some great matchups all through. And we've seen even the lower seeds have really been pushing the higher seeds. And there have been some great games. How about UCSB hanging with the Connecticut for most of the game today before the Huskies uh, finally pulled away at the end? A traveling call against Hunt. 12th turnover of the day by Drury, which. Uh, been down between 8 and 12 points here for the last 10-15 minutes of game time. Racing down the floor is Stork. Finds Simbach, and she's got four points down in the game. The lead to 12 for Cal. Simbach has over 2,000 points in her career. She started her career at Slippery Rock when Darcy Vincent was the head coach there. And then after Vincent came over to Cal PA, Simbach waited a year and then has transferred over, has been on three Elite Eight teams with Darcy Vincent. An easy one for Stork. Now over 200 career steals. Lead at 14 and Simbach covers a double-double last year, starts a break. McKinney foul hard. And we'll go to the line for a pair. Do you sense that California pulling away? Yeah, they're starting to really get their tempo and being able to push. And Stork doing such a nice job. Bounce passing it. She turned Amy Ballou around, and she wasn't able to recover and had to commit the foul. But California has been able to push the ball, use their defense to ignite their offense, and that's when they're at their best. How about Stork? 13 points and 9 assists. She averages 8 assists on the season per game. That's good for third in the country. Now 284 career assists for Megan Stork. And she's just a sophomore as you looked at the McKinney's numbers. But they haven't needed her offense in the second half because Stork and Simbach have come up big so far. 
That's a great point, and Drury just needs to settle down here, get some looks in their offense. We talked earlier about use their inside game to set up their outside. Newton is now back off the bench with those three fouls, but they need to find a way to get her the basketball and set some offense up. The three goes for Brunson, and that trims the lead at 12. And that's another great story for this Drury team. Brunson, a three-year starter for this team, and replaced when Allison Regeer transferred over from College of Charleston. And it's been a tough situation for her, but still an ability to contribute a lot. And there she gets her hands on the basketball. She's the only Lady Panther to play in every game in the four-year history of the program. Trying to win a national title here. Ballou. The basket counts in a blocking call against Simba. Nothing run by Drury and a chance to make it six straight. Brunson had a lot to do with it. She makes his post entry here. Nice move inside. You know, Simbach flops out of that, but she really was leaning and committed that foul. And that was a nice job by Amy Ballou of setting it up to the interior of the paint and then attacking the basket the other way. They say McKinney got the foul. That's her third. Simbach was uh, the one who took the blocking call, but uh, McKinney now has three fouls. Drury has cut the California Pennsylvania lead to nine. Start with one of her nine assists. It's like to have the hot hand in the hottest selling car in its class. Now you like me now, Pontiac said. Vibe. Official performance machine of the NCAA Women's Final Four. There are two sides to me. The all-conference catcher side, that's my tough side. And the side of me studying for a career in marine mammal rescue, that's my soft side. I'm finding I really need both sides to be the whole person that I want to be. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. This offseason, I've been more sensitive, understanding. Well, that time's over. Ted, get the hat. Get ready to run, maggots, but first, lights out! Get to Dick's Sporting Goods for Nike Shocks Turbos. Get Under Armour, plus Nike Air Conversions for game day. Let's review. Dick's Sporting Goods, Nike, Under Armour. Dick's and please just take your pick. Every season starts at Dick's. When you have the space, you can always find ways to fill it. The Mitsubishi Galant. Overall, the biggest car in its class. Still starting under 18 grand. And right now, get 1.9% financing for 60 months and a 10-year warranty on a car you actually want to drive. Only at Mitsubishi. Pure Madness. Brought to you by Minute Maid. Brought to you by Minute Maid. A palpable intensity you come to expect from a national championship game. Drury, on a 6 to nothing run, has cut the California lead to 9 with just under 12 to play in the second half. You know, don't count this Drury team out. Nyla Millicent has led this team to three wins this year over teams that were rated number one in the nation at the time that they played them. When they were in Orlando earlier, they beat South Dakota. They beat North Dakota in Hawaii when they were ranked number one. And then in the quarterfinals of this Elite Eight, they beat Seattle Pacific. Newton with the rebound off the miss from and Drury can make it a seven-point lead or perhaps six. They got it to six once earlier in the half. It was an eight-point lead for California at halftime. 
Remember, McKinney has three fouls. Do you try to attack her? Right now, Stratton is on her, so I think that's a tough matchup for Drury. If she would pull the trigger there quickly, she could, but I still think you need to look for the inside game. Ballou trying to call timeout instead of jump ball is called. It'll go to California. Phil Yaw returns, replacing Mills for Cal PA. Phil Yaw averaging 16 points per game, but just six in this contest. Well, right now, Drury's going to come out with a little full court pressure, try to make Cal PA make some mistakes. They kind of drop off. It's pretty soft. But they've really picked up their defense. Now they switch back to a man and they force a turnover. They've been showing zone most of the second half. And McKinney slow to get up, hobbling as she uh, comes back down the floor. It's the Women's Division II National Championship game from the St. Joseph Civic Arena. Dave Pass with Brenda Van Langen. It's been a fast pace up and down game so far. And being here in St. Joe, Missouri Western has just been a tremendous host for this event. It's been a terrific Elite Eight event. 22 points for McKinney, the leading scorer for Cal. And then White, it's been Newton with 17 to lead the way. Rebounded by Phoenicia Clark. As Drury fails on its second attempt, got to cut this lead to seven or six. This Drury team actually beat Missouri Western in the first round of their region. Again, Cal PA looking for that back screen, trying to clear it out for uh, on the offside. But in that game against Missouri Western, Drury had Amanda Newton score 23 points and 21 rebounds. And the Missouri Western coach said, you know, we've had double doubles against us before, but usually never double 20s. And it was just an incredible game by Amanda Newton in that first round against Missouri Western. Although they'll be without Newton here for a while with four personal fouls. 10 19 on the clock. If it stays right on eight, nine points, at what point do you bring her back in if you're Nyla Millicent? Well, I think you kind of have to see how things go here. If they're able to score without her, you can leave her on the bench longer. But if Cal PA starts stretching out this lead a little bit, you got to think about getting Newton back on the court. This is the national championship. There's 10 minutes to go in the season, and you want to get your best players on the court. You see the emotion uh, wearing down on some of the players here. It's been quite a run. This tournament different from the Division I Women's and Men's Basketball Championships where you have the Elite Eight. Eight teams come to St. Joseph, Missouri. So you're in uh, one place for uh, a week. And it's down to this. And with the Elite Eight in Division II, something else that's different is the matchups are determined ahead of time. So they will pre-match, pre-determine regions that will play against each other here at the Elite Eight. So it's not a matter of seeding one versus eight when you get here. It's a matter of playing the region that you're matched up against. Basket by Hunt from Curry, and it's a seven-point lead for California. Well, and that gets the crowd up the Drury right now getting on their feet trying to encourage a defensive stop here no team coming out of the east regional has ever won a women's division two title california pennsylvania is the number one seed in the east leading by seven and on nine as phil Yaw scores giving her eight points we haven't seen a lot of offense from her but she is so capable of just rising up above and does a nice job putting the ball on the floor Ballou can't get the roll, but she's fouled. And we'll go on Clark. That's her first personal. Five team fouls now on California. Seven fouls on Drury. You know, Nyla Millicent talks about the fact that Amy Ballou is probably the most improved player on this Drury squad from last year. She was recruited as an interior player as a four. She want, they wanted her to play a four here, but she actually was a three in high school. So she they want to use her athleticism and her toughness, and she really has had a nice game this afternoon. Also an excellent student, a 3.9 great point average. As she gets both free throws, back to a seven point lead for California. Now some pressure by Drury, and then they back off again. Maybe because Stork is so quick getting down the floor, and she'll go to the line for a pair. 
Boy, it is so tough to put a full court press on this Cal team just because of Megan Stork. And, you know, a lot of that is Darcy Vincent and her style of play. She was a point guard. She has that point guard mentality, and she communicates with Megan Stork and has a lot of expectations for this sophomore. And she just, Stork just pushes the ball down the court and creates and makes things happen. Hunt commits the foul, her first personal. 18 fouls now in Drury. As you look at Megan Stork and her numbers in this game so far. Nine assists. And again, 284 career assists in two seasons of college basketball. Now foul on Drury after the missed free throw. It's the follow second in the 19th call. Kyla Millicent's Drury Lady Panthers. It's a tough call for Drury. I tell you what, there was a good block out underneath, and Philia just using her good quickness to try to get around and went to the floor and gets a trip to the line. But again, they fail to convert on the foul line. They all 10 out of 16. Only strike so far. Curry bumped by Dylan. And she'll go to the line. Jill Curry has had an outstanding afternoon for Drury. She just is aggressive on the block and realizes the urgency of this situation. And when she got the basketball, she put the ball on the floor and put her head down and took it at the basket. She's so good using both her right and her left hand and just went around Dylan to draw the foul. Third foul on Dylan. Rutledge back into the game. And it'll be Regeer going to the bench. Curry is an 81% free throw shooter, and she'll play volleyball next year, using up her fifth year of eligibility. Since uh, the 13, uh, first 13 minutes of this game, she's got nine points, now 10, as Drury has got it down to five with nine minutes to play. Well, she has been stepping up since Newton has been on the bench with foul trouble, and she needs to. And I tell you what, Drury just keeps coming back and coming back. Four points so far in the second half after an 18-point first half. Shot clock is at nine. Phil Yaw trying to get it inside, and last touch by California. This Drury defense has really stepped up in the second half. That time, as the ball was being reversed, the Drury defenders' hands were active. They got around and tipped the ball and made the ball go off Sim back inside. But the Drury defense has really picked up its intensity. They've been a good game all the way around by both teams as Rutledge drives and scores to cut it to three. And both coaches and the top players from both teams were at a press conference together yesterday afternoon that was interesting. I've never seen two teams at a press conference together so complimentary of one another, but they knew what a battle this would be and the great point guards, the up and down style. And another turnover by California. Rutledge going to slow it down. Jury has taken advantage of the fact that they have a lot of fans here in attendance. They've really been riding that momentum. We are tied as Brunson hits the three. Two threes in the second half by Megan Brunson, the former starter. The senior only Panther to play in every game of her career. Drury can take the lead. And holding Cal PA to only one shot, one and done, and then they come back and play offense. I'll tell you what, right now there was a switch, and Curry has a mismatch. They need to get her the ball. They did a good job getting it to her. This Cal PA defense switches screens, and five foot four Stork ends up on six foot one Jill Curry. Drury identified it and did a good job of getting Curry. amazing. Three minutes ago, you looked at the jury bench and you saw heads and hands, and now you look at them and everybody's cheering and clapping and loving it. The emotions of a national title game, just amazing how things can change that quickly. And these two teams representing what is so great about the competition on Division II basketball. 
A two-point lead by Drury. Megan Brunson with a couple of huge threes in the second half for Drury. like to have the hot hand in the hottest selling car in its class. Now you like me now, Pontiac say. Vibe. Official performance machine of the NCAA Women's Final Four. He wants meat lovers, she wants a supreme, and you want your favorite. Pizza Hut's got the answer. The new four for all. Four individual pizzas filling one box from corner to corner for just $11.99. The new four for all. Make everyone happy only at Pizza Hut. We are low-budget films from New Jersey. We're on the Winter Fresh Network. Winter Fresh Network, where icy cool breath is always on. Pick it up, Stinky. Me? You got no stamina. Only Odor Eaters has new Zorbitex technology to absorb sweat and destroy odor on contact. Get tough with foot odor. Get Odor Eaters Ultra Durable Insoles. Casual Male Big and Tall presents me, George Foreman, with my new comfort zone collection. Collar stretch, waist adjust, shoulders expand, expand on just a incredible. Get into my comfort zone only at Casual Male Big and Tall. My old nationwide wireless plan said they didn't charge me for roaming. Yeah, right. If I stayed in network, but if you can't even see the network, yoo-hoo! Network, I'm in the network. Oh, network. How do you stay in it? There's no in or out of network with the new Singular Nation. You never pay roaming or long distance, even with your nationwide mobile-to-mobile -mobile minutes. I call it my... plan. The new Singular Nation. Another reason Singular fits you best. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. Statue of the Pony Express here in St. Joseph, Missouri, where we have an excellent game between California, Pennsylvania, and Drury with just over seven minutes remaining in the second half. 63-61, Drury has come back as we look at our Harley-Davidson game track. Kenny has really been held in check here in the second half by the Drury defense. And Curry and Hope Hunt have stepped it up to have 18 points in the second half. And you can see the run. Both these teams so good with scoring runs during the course of the season. And it's been Drury's run over these last four minutes that have swung the momentum in this basketball game. It was an eight-point lead at halftime for Cal Pennsylvania. The Balkans got it to 15 points before Drury came back and took the lead. But McKinney reties it. She gets points 23 and 24. And McKinney is going to try to take this basketball game over, so watch what Drury does with her defensively. That time she had to shoot over Jill Curry and did a good job. But McKinney, that kind of mentality that she wants to have the ball in her hands. Let's not forget the top scorer for Drury has been on the bench during this run. Amanda Newton on the bench with four fouls, and we thought that that might be a problem for Drury, but apparently not. However, Cal PA going to get the ball here, much to the chagrin of Isla Millicent. And now head and hands again. We were head and hands, then we were cheering, and now we're back to head and hands. And that's always so frustrating when you think the ball is yours, and it's such a tight game, and every possession matters. McKinney going to work, missing offensive rebound by Simbach. They fight for it, and they're going to give it to California. Again, relentless job on the boards by this Cal PA team. Becky Simbach got the first one. She got her hands on that second one. Well, which breaks it up. Let's start with a heads-up play. They'll start the offense for California. Samira Filia scores, and California is back up two with under six to go in regulation. 
I tell you what, the players on the help side defense that time were so concerned about McKinney, they were watching her and they didn't get over to help on Philia on the block. Long headed strip by McKinney, but she stepped on the end line. You can see Cal PA used to winning. They know what's at stake. They had a heartbreaking loss here in the semifinals last year where they lost by two points. They have felt this run and they are answering back right now. You see a real intensity on defense by Cal PA right now. Shot clock at 10. Side of Curry with one. Rebound by Phil Yaw. And Stork always with the head up looking to push the tempo. Yeah, I thought she got away with a double dribble there. Strip from behind. And a foul call on Brunson. But Brunson, the senior, trying to make something happen there. We're in St. Joseph, Missouri for the Women's Division II National Championship game. Dave Pash and Brenda Van Langen. Drury trails by two. They led by two moments ago, and they were down by 15 earlier in this half. It's been a, a tournament of second-half scoring runs for Drury. First free throw goes for Philia, and here comes Amanda Newton, who's been on the bench for a while with four fouls. Amy Ballou did a fantastic job replacing her, and she'll go to the bench. And both these teams are so explosive offensively. They both have, throughout the season, used scoring runs to gain momentum, and Drury did it to get back in the game. And Cal PA has had a nice answer here. Neither team has ever won a national championship. Drury's basketball program on the ladies' side didn't start until 2000. Yet here they are four years later with a chance to win a title. Down by four with under five to play. Curry's triple team and it's stripped and stolen away by Philia. That was a nice job there by Cal PA with their defense. Curry has been so aggressive in attacking on the block and that time they did not allow her to go anywhere. Clock at 12. Stork had it stripped beautifully by Curry. Ahead to Rutledge. Fouled by Phil Yaw with the body. She blocked the shot that got her with the body. Rutledge will go to the line. Well, the intimidation factor, Rutledge knowing that the shot may be blocked, so does a nice job getting a little head and shoulder fake, draws the foul. What a heady play by the sophomore. 86% free throw shooter. This is the first. And Nyla Millicent has seen Kara Rutledge play since she was a fifth and sixth grader. Same with a lot of these players. Nyla Millicent was a high school coach before taking over this program, and she was very involved with AAU basketball. That's how she was able to build up this team so quickly was because she had coached and had coached against and coached on the same team with a lot of these kids before she ever got the jury job. Oh, great feed by McKinney, but unable to finish his sim back. And Drury a chance to tie the game with a three. Into Newton. Finds Hunt wide open. We're tied again. Hope Hunt is a shooter. And even though she has struggled in this game, she has the shooter's mentality, and she's going to keep putting the ball up. And her team needed that. That is a big-time bucket. Hunt 10th in the country in three-point shooting at 43%. She's knocked down two in this game. Ten points now. Four players in double figures for both teams. Philia trying to answer is Dylan. And her foot on the line, though. It is a two, and it's 69-67 in California. Newton with four fouls stripped. Gets on the floor, they call a jump ball. It'll stay Drury basketball with 19 on the shot clock. A terrific conclusion is coming up. Hope Hunt with a big three for Drury. Down two to California. Feel 
what it's like to have the hot hand in the hottest selling car in its class. Pontiac Vibe. Official performance machine of the NCAA Women's Final Four. Put that fork down and step away from the salad. Salads aren't supposed to be brown. Go to Wendy's. Oh, no, not again. Wouldn't a spinach chicken salad be good? Romaine, chopped egg, and bacon? Wendy's has that? Honey, what are you doing? Just a second, honey. And, and, and a sweet and sour bacon dressing with, with just two and a half grams of fat. You with Wendy's? Well, unofficially. <sighs> Wendy's new spinach chicken salad. It's better here. I'm so sorry. This will never happen again. Thank you. Will my car be ready this afternoon like you promised? Yes. Will you use a bunch of lingo I won't understand? No. Will you try to sell me something I really don't need? No. Do you like Broadway show tunes? No. Visit your neighborhood Midas Mechanic now for lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes. Just $89.95, including installation. Guaranteed for as long as you own your car. For mechanics known for their work and their word. Trust the Midas touch. California school president Angelo Armenti Jr. and his hair on the line along with the national championship said he'd shave it if California won. Here's our Pontiac high performance moment. Well, that's when Megan Brunson knocked down that three-pointer. That was at the end of the run for Drury. They were down by 10 and came back and tied it up with that. The senior who comes off the bench, who was a three-year starter, so valuable to this team, and she hit the big bucket. It even started the first part of the season, but when some people got healthy and started to come on, some of the younger players for Drury. Brunson went back to the bench, but has not pouted. He's made a couple of big shots here in the second half for Drury. Shot clock at 15. Hunt all the way, had it blocked by Dillon. Good clock, the shot clock was winding down. She had to create, make something happen. Stork missing. Rutledge looking to push it. What a fun game between two very talented programs. In a physical game, too. Rutledge for three. There's that inside-outside we were talking about as the defenders look at the ball inside, kick it out. Rutledge comes through with another huge three for Drury. And Drury leads by one. Kara Rutledge's dad, Steve, was a standout player for the Drury men. They're the only father-daughter combo in school history. McKinney gives California the lead back by one. You just get the feeling this is going to be one of those games where it depends on who has the basketball last. 26 for McKinney. Newton, who has four fouls, turns, misses. And cleared by Stork. Who has 13 points, 10 assists, and a few rebounds, and they're a turnover by California. Boy, that was a big defensive play because Samira Filia had the defense beat. If Stork could have gotten her the ball, that would have been an easy layup. Looking to retake the lead. Under two to play in regulation. Both teams looking for their first ever Division II National Championship. Rutledge misses that triple, but there is Hunt. And a reset. Myra Millison talked about rebounding being such a key to this game, and Drury has really done a nice job. And a turnover, as that pass was intended for Rutledge, but Curry got in the way. Alan Millison uh, can't believe it, but still encourages her team to play well defensively here against the uh, well, Pennsylvania, which leads by one with 80 seconds to play. Well, this is just what you hope for in a national championship game. Two teams playing well. It's a tight game. It's going to come down to who makes the big play. California lost in the final four last year. It's goal all year long to get back here and win it. And now they lead by one as we hit the one-minute mark. McKinney missing. And rebounded by Hope Hunt. And a timeout called by Nyla Millison with 53.9 on the clock in the second half of the Division II Women's Basketball Championship. And what are you expecting to see offensively from Drury here on this possession, Brenda? Well, I think they've had some good luck with their three-pointers. They don't need a three-pointer, obviously, but I think they're going to try to get it inside to Newton or into Curry and see what happens from there. If they don't get the double team, try to score inside. If not, kick it out, look for a three-point shot. They've got some good options. And Drury and Cal 
Cal PA have so many players on the court that can score. They've got a lot of options here. Kind of a surprising number there that since Newton went out with their fourth foul, they've outscored California 20 to 12, although Newton has been back in the game for the last three or four minutes. She has four fouls. McKinney, they did take that foul away. Originally, she had three, and then uh, they took it off the official stats, and McKinney uh, not in foul trouble with just two now in a timeout situation. And the possession arrow favoring Drury. Both teams are in the bonus. California's in the double bonus with now 10 fouls on Drew. And both teams have a couple of timeouts left, so they have time for the coaches to talk strategy here, make sure everybody's on the same page. And, you know, both these teams have been winning so handily throughout the year and throughout the tournament. They were asking the press conference yesterday, what if it comes down to a close game? And Darcy Vincent talked about the fact that you want the ball in the hands of your seniors and you just have to be confident in your players to make plays. Jury number one in the country in scoring margin. California number two. And a foul as Rutledge goes strong to the goal. For the goal against Stork. That's the third on her. 19 foul and Rutledge. Again, is an 86% free throw shooter. Already has one miss in the game. We'll go back to the strike. And they came out and attacked got Rutledge freed up so that she could put the ball on the floor. We've seen that great point guard matchup all night. But Kara Rutledge doing a good job there getting to the free throw line because she attacked the, de the defense. Drury leads by one. Under 45 seconds to play in regulation. A 14 second difference between the game and shot clock. Stork is left open, nails the three, and California leads by two. The jury can use the entire shot clock here. They can go for a last shot. They also have some timeouts left. Hunt missing the three. Rebound by Stork. Got to get a quick foul. Well, she got fouled, but there was no call. Now they grab Sim back with 9.2 in the clock. Stork is banged up. She got leveled, but there was no call. It was right in front of the official. And now Simbach, who shoots 75% from the foul line, will go there for two free throws. Well, what a big-time play by Megan Stork. They leave her open. She gets a good look at the basket. A 38.6% three-point shooter on the year, and she nails it when it matters the most. 16 points, 10 assists for Megan Stork. And Darcy Vincent going to get an opportunity to set up the defense for California. Well, and you have to expect Cal PA so good at the full court pressure. After the free throws, I'm sure she's talking to her team about you cannot allow Drury to come down the court easily, but we do not want to commit any fouls. Eight double-doubles this season for Stork, who over the last five games is averaging almost 12 assists per game. Simbach. It will be a one-possession game, assuming Drury gets the basketball after a make or miss. It's a three-point game. Brunson will call time with 5.8 on the clock. You go for the, you have to go for a three here, right? Too late to get a quick two? Yeah, there's no, not enough time just for a quick two. They're going to draw up a three-point play out of the timeout. Tomorrow, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues with Mid-East Regional Semifinal Games. At noon Eastern on ESPN2, or ESPN, I should say, Louisiana Tech meets Duke, and then at 2.30 on ESPN2, it's Minnesota and Boston College. For more info, log on to ESPN.com. We had great games in uh, Division I earlier today. And a great Division II national title as Angelo Armenti Jr. awaits the Razor. If a Cal Pennsylvania hangs on to win, he promised that he'd shave his head if they won the national championship. And you've got four players on the court right now for Drury who are great three-point shooters. 
Oilers has to get an inbound. Calls a timeout. That's the last one for Drury. Well, Jill Curry for this Drury team is 0 for 2 on the year for three-point shooting. So she's not going to be the one looking for that shot. But even Amy Ballou is a 45% three-point shooter. And the others out on the court all you know, in that 37 to 42% range. So Drury has a lot of options here. Coming up next, the 2003 World Series of Poker from Las Vegas, Nevada. There's a very astute fan. Also, dream job season finale tomorrow. Well, California, Pennsylvania will be number one. If it hangs on here with 5.8 to go. Rutledge, Drury down three. Rutledge from about 40 feet. And California, Pennsylvania, if it can get the ball in bounds, will win the championship. And that was tremendous defense by Cal PA, not allowing the play to develop for Drury. Stacey Vincent calls a timeout. They will have one left, so if they can't get it in bounds, they can call that final timeout with .6 seconds remaining. Well, Drury had the play. They were looking for the double screen on the outside, but it was good defense, and Rutledge couldn't get the ball to anybody else, decided to fire it up herself. That's just great defense in crunch time by Cal PA. Regardless of what happens, what a run by Nyla Millicent's Drury Lady Panthers. They started the program four years ago. Here they are in the national title game from St. Joseph, Missouri. Alongside Brenda Van Langen, I'm Dave Pash. California, Pennsylvania wearing the red is points six seconds away from winning its first ever national title. The World Series of Poker follows us here on ESPN2. Well, this has been a tremendous matchup by two wonderfully talented teams. Both great scoring teams. The defense has played so well this afternoon. They get it in bounds, and Phil Yaw is fouled with .1 on the clock. The three foul is on Brunson, number four. Darcy Vincent, who led this team to the final four a year ago, is .1 seconds away from a national championship, and they're already celebrating on the court as uh, the Cal players embrace. Jury did what they could. They were trying to draw the foul so that they could get a chance to go to the free throw line. They did everything they could, but you have two tremendous teams, two terrific coaches and two programs that this probably won't be the last time that they see the national championship game. And uh, their, their teammates uh, dogging Samira Filia for putting up air on that shot. And there it is. Now she stepped over, lane violation. All Drury can do is tip it in though. With under .3 seconds left, they have to throw out the length of the floor and hope for a tip. Awfully hard to tip a three-pointer. And there it is. California has won the Division II National Championship. What a great game all around by this tremendous team. They got balanced scoring. They played great defense, but you have to take your hat off to both these teams. These young ladies poured it all out on the line this afternoon. You couldn't wish for anything more in a national championship game. And the Razor is up next for Angelo Armenti Jr. The California Pennsylvania president promised to shave his head if they won the national championship. He will be bald tonight. And what a run by Nyla Millicent and Drury. But congratulations to Darcy Vincent as she embraces her star player, Sarah McKinney, who had 26 points to lead the way for California, Pennsylvania, which captures its first ever Division II women's national basketball title. What a great run by California. After getting to the Final Four a year ago, bringing all five starters back, a lot expected of this team. They live up to their billing. Getting here, knocking off the defending national champ, South Dakota State, crushing Merrimack, and then getting a scare, leading by 15 points early in the second half. Drury came back to take the lead, but in the end, California, Pennsylvania standing with the trophy, a three-point win. Cal PA has, has four players that finished in double figures. McKinney with 26. They shot 47.5%.
just a tremendous performance by this team in their first ever trip to the national championship game. And a classy move, a standing ovation by the California fans for Drury after a Drury is recognized for being the runner-up. Sarah McKinney, 26 points as California, Pennsylvania wins by three. That's it from the St. Joseph Civic Arena in St. Joseph, Missouri. Our congratulations to California, Pennsylvania, the women's 2004 Division II National Champions. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Brenda Van Langen and our entire crew. I'm Dave Pash. The 2003 World Series of Poker is next.